WCBI News at 6 starts now. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Cash Matlock. The Mississippi Department of Health reports 229 new cases of COVID-19 with 10 new deaths. Mississippi's total of COVID-19 cases since March 11th now stands at more than 7,400 with 291 total deaths. The number of Mississippians currently hospitalized with confirmed COVID-19 infection has fallen to 424. 41 of the new cases reported today were among residents and long-term care facilities, and there are now 100 active outbreaks of COVID-19 within long-term care facilities statewide. Here at WCBI, we feel that it's also important to mention the number of people who have recovered from the virus. And right now, that number is presumed to be more than 3,400 within the state. The Mississippi Coronavirus Hotline is the best way to get your questions about COVID-19 answered. You can call at 877-978-6453. The hotline has new hours and is now available from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. seven days a week. Well, as dozens of states begin to allow businesses to at least partially reopen, no such green light has been given in New York, which saw a setback in the daily death toll. CBS News correspondent Michael George has more from New York. The fact of the matter is Florida Governor Ron DeSantis stopped into this hair salon in Orlando on Saturday. If you have something like, like these personal services, what's the risk level? And is there a way we can lower the risk level? On the governor's orders, restaurants and stores in all but three of the most populous counties will be allowed to operate at limited capacity starting Monday. Warm spring weather drew countless New Yorkers to the city parks, where face masks were handed out. Governor Cuomo says the virus killed 299 people in the state on Friday, the first uptick in weeks. We're still getting about 900 new infections every day walking into the hospital. We're trying to understand exactly why that is. But in a sign of hope, on Monday, Mount Sinai Hospital will stop admitting new patients to the Samaritan's Purse Field Hospital in Central Park. Mount Sinai says COVID-19 hospital admissions are now reaching manageable levels. As Muslims around the world observe Ramadan, those closest to one of the hardest hit parts of New York City are grieving. I am just a thousand feet away from El Marst Hospital. So we have lost a lot of Muslim brothers and sisters in my community, especially from that I know a lot of them. And over the nation's capital, Navy and Air Force Blue Angels and Thunderbirds showed thanks to medical and other essential workers on the front lines. Michael George, CBS News. In Washington, Democratic lawmakers spoke out against the White House decision to allow Dr. Anthony Fauci to testify in the Republican-controlled Senate, but not before the House Appropriations Committee. Committee Chair Nita Lowey said in a statement, quote, The COVID-19 pandemic should not and cannot become a partisan issue. There are too many lives at risk, end quote. Well, the warmer temperatures and sunny skies made for a perfect spring day today. Meteorologist Trevor Burchett joins us live from outside the studio with a first look at weather. Trevor, how's it looking out there? Cash, it feels absolutely incredible outside. I honestly wish I could stay out here all day, but I think this is all I'm going to be allowed. We're here in downtown Columbus, as I mentioned, just outside of the WCBI studios. Temperatures got up to the mid 80s today. Lots of sunshine and blue sky out there. And I actually asked on social media for you to send in what you did today to enjoy the weather. So we're going to take a look at some of those pictures now. Coming up first from Starkville, this is Becky Williams. She's actually out at the lake. You see some horses there also trying to cool off. You've also got uh, Christy Ross in Columbus. She did uh, something that I love to do. I love to go outside and take some photos uh, and enjoy the sunshine there. You see the roses there looking absolutely gorgeous this time of year. Over in Nanawaya, Jeannie got out into the garden. Some beautiful blooms on the bushes there. You see that beautiful yellow flower. Just an absolutely gorgeous day out there. Meanwhile, over in Coal Fire, Alabama, now this is my idea of fun. Take a look at this. The slip and slide has come out. It has blown up. Lots of fun times out there. It takes me back to my childhood. You know, I think we should really get a slip and slide here in the WCBI parking lot. I'll talk to management about that. We'll see if we can do something. Uh, also, uh, here in Columbus, a great day to get out on the lake and fish. Take a look at this. A nice fish catch uh, there on the lake here in Columbus. And last but not least, from over in Starkville at the lake at Research Park. This is from Haley. 
and you see some dogs there trying to cool off. Looks like they might have taken a dip in the lake there. All in all, humans, animals, everybody enjoying this type of weather. And we want to remind you, the weather is going to stick around, and it's going to be nice for the next few days. So if you see any interesting weather happening, of course, not much interesting weather happening here over the next couple of days. But use this time to tell us how you're enjoying the weather. Send those photos into us, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Also on our email address, weather at WCBI.com. So I, I led on to it just a little bit, but this nice weather is really going to stick around here for the next few days. Cash, I'll have a full look at that forecast from inside the studio coming up in just a little bit. All right, Trevor, thank you. Well, a political tug of war is shaping up as state leaders figure out next steps in the response to COVID-19. The questions today all revolve around who has spending authority for the $1.25 billion of federal CARES Act money in Mississippi. Courtney Ann Jackson has the latest. Masked, socially distanced, and ready to take on the question of who holds the purse strings, Lieutenant Governor Delbert Hoseman and Speaker Philip Gunn laid out their case Friday morning. The state of Mississippi appropriations, at least since 1890, have been done by the legislature. 174 people who are responsible, transparent, and elected by the people. The governor says that by letting him spend the money, he can get it where it needs to go more quickly. That makes for a good sound bite, but what voice does that give the citizens in that decision making process? Who speaks for the citizens in that process? They both made this note. We hold Governor Reeves in high regard. What we do today is not personal. Hours later, while the legislature wrapped up its business, the governor weighed in during his daily briefing. I think they really believe this is about internal politics. Who has the power? Is it legislative versus executive? I don't think they're bad people. I really just don't think they realize the damage this would do. Reeves has repeatedly maintained in recent days that his interpretation of the state law and precedent is that the governor has the spending authority. He says the legislative process is a good one, but in situations like this, it would tie his hands and keep money from those who need it. Best case scenario, they overestimate and send a whole lot of money back to the federal government when it goes unused. Worst case scenario, they underestimate and people die because we can't get them what they need. Reeves raising this question as it relates to the legislature's return. If the law says that I can't do it, then why are we changing the law? Courtney Ann Jackson, WCBI News. The bill now goes to the governor. If he vetoes it, it's back to the legislature. With businesses gradually opening up in Mississippi and face masks being required in most businesses, the City of Oxford, Visit Oxford, and Chick-fil-A in Oxford partnered together to give out free face coverings Friday from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. and then from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. People drove by to get their face coverings from city officials and volunteers. The coverings were made from this year's Double Decker Festival shirts, and because of the coronavirus, the festival was moved back to August. The United Way of North Central Mississippi has seen an increase in the amount of food given out over, pa over the past few weeks. Now they're asking for help from the public. Shelves once filled with, with food are now empty. A warehouse that was full of many different foods is also depleted from COVID-19. And the number of people in need, the United Way says the pantries they supply are seeing an increase in donations. The need is, for, according to all the food pantries, is increasing daily. We have one food pantry, Usually under normal times, it's open two days a month. They are now open five days a week. April found them uh, packing up 335 bags of food and um, feel like it's just going to go from there. There will be a drive through food drive on May 16th from 12 to 3. Businesses all over the country have had a decrease in sales because of the coronavirus, but that's not the case for a local car dealership whose sales have gone up. Our Savannah Gato has more on the booming car sales. She joins us live in the studio. Selling cars is difficult on its own, but adding a global pandemic on top of it makes it worse. But at Cannon Ford Lincoln, their approach is helping customers cash in on some good deals. The 0% for 84 months and 0% for 72 months on tw uh, 20 models from Ford uh, has really helped our new car sales. One of the best, we've been here 10 months, one of the new car, best new car sales months we've had since we've been here because of those incentives. With COVID-19 affecting businesses everywhere, Chris Keen expected sales to go down, but instead it's gone up. With all the environment going on and uh, didn't really know what to expect, but yeah, we expect a, a 
definitely a decline in sales for April and ended up being exactly the opposite. The dealership has had to take a few new approaches on ways to continue selling vehicles. Yeah, we've had, you know, of course, naturally practicing a six foot rule, you know, walk, wiping all the touch points down every couple hours, uh, trying to wipe people's cars down, uh, coming in and out of service best we can. We've had to do a lot of car appraising off site, some deliveries off site. So, yeah, it's been a, a different way of doing business, but I think everybody's took it in stride with a good positive. Everybody stayed healthy and everybody stayed positive, so everything's went really well. With these changes, Keene said it has benefited customers. Well, yeah, I think it'll, uh, especially with the off-site deliveries and some of the appraisals off-site, uh, pick up delivery and service, it's probably making it a lot more convenient for customers doing business with us because of some of the things we learned because of this. Not only have Ford sales increased at the dealership, they have increased all over the South. The Memphis region, which we're in, uh, for as Ford was actually up 5% year over year for the entire region, so it says everybody in the South sales were up Ford-wise. As sales keep going up, Keen has needed to hire some extra help at the shop. Yeah, well, since we've been here, it's uh, it's continued to go up. We've worked hard. We've added employees, uh, added in inventory, added people in the a back part of the store, uh, just trying to you know increase our sales here while we while we've been here. To know when more businesses will be opening up across the state, visit our website at WCBI to stay updated. Up next, normal graduation ceremonies may be canceled, but that isn't stopping one group of seniors from celebrating. We've got the full story coming up after the break. Stay with us. You're watching WCBI News at 6 p.m. with Cash Matlock. Welcome back in everyone. Graduation ceremonies at the University of Mississippi have been postponed due to the coronavirus pandemic, but that's not stopping one apartment complex from celebrating its seniors. Our DeAndrea Turner explains. As their wills hit the pavement, some Ole Miss seniors were teary-eyed for a not-so-typical graduation celebration. Journalism. Denver Haggard. Denver Haggard is one of the several grads being recognized in a non traditional way from its car. I'm kind of sad we're not getting to walk across the stage, but you know, we're doing it the best way we can and a parade it is. The domain apartment still managed to celebrate its graduates in style. They even handed out medals and certificates. A lot of seniors are very sad that we're not getting to walk across the stage in the traditional way. So this is just one way we wanted to give back to the seniors and let them know that we appreciate them. Um, just getting the chance to even celebrate uh, my graduation and my achievements at the University of Mississippi is just awesome. Grad Carl Tart says despite not being able to walk across the stage, he'll always cherish the memories he made. Um, even though I don't, I won't have a traditional uh, graduation, you know, it's all about the work that I put into these last four years. It's all about the connections I made with the people. It's all about the happy experiences, and I'll take those with me. The class of 2020 is rolling out. Ole Miss will hold a virtual ceremony next Saturday. And just like magic, I'm back inside where the weather is not quite as nice, but it is a comfortable 68 degrees inside. Still in to the 80s outside, and we're going to fall down into the 50s by the time you wake up tomorrow morning under a mostly clear sky. Another really nice day tomorrow and even for Monday, but there are some storms in the forecast. I'll tell you when to expect those coming up in just a little bit. Your WCBI first alert AccuWeather forecast with meteorologist Trevor Burchett. Hey there, friends. Thanks for checking in with us on this Saturday evening. Temperature is still pretty warm out there, and if you haven't gotten into the backyard pool, you might want to do it. All of us here in the studio were just talking about how cool that transition is. Look at that water flying up on the sky. Just so much fun getting us into the summertime mood. Temperatures tomorrow, basically the same story as today. We're going to warm up into the mid-80s under a mostly sunny sky. Just a few clouds out there. But if the kids are begging you to open up the pool and you're saying, oh, you know, maybe not, you really probably should. I'll vouch for them on this one because we're going to have a stretch of warmer weather coming up for the next few days. Let's take a look at our temperature trend for what is coming up. And our average high for this time of year, 78 degrees. Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, we're going to be above average. Highs in the low to mid 80s across the area. We do get back a little closer to average as we get toward the middle and end of the week as we have a couple of weak cold fronts come through. 
But still, to me, 78 degrees is just still enough to get outside into the slip and slide or the backyard pool. Right now, definitely some nice weather to be grilling. Anything you can do in the backyard. 83 right now in Columbus under a mostly sunny sky. You can see hardly not any clouds in the sky. Same story in Tupelo, a beautiful bright blue sky there uh, in downtown Tupelo. Temperatures there also 83 with just a light wind coming out of the north. Overnight tonight, temperature is going to fall, as I mentioned, down into the 50s. Wind's going to come out of the south overnight, hoping to keep us a little bit warmer. We're only going to fall to about 50. 58 degrees for the low skies do also stay mostly clear and by the time you wake up that's going to be the same story temperatures tomorrow also going to reach into the mid 80s we'll call it 85 here in Columbus 86 in Macon 85 as well in Vernon so another very warm day just a few more clouds than what we saw today out there but still a very nice day plenty of sunshine and really the next three days going to be looking nice Sat uh, Sunday and Monday just a few more clouds on Monday highs even a little warmer 86 for the high Tuesday, we've got to start to talk about the chance for uh, some scattered showers and maybe some storms out there. I don't think it's a washout, but that cold front that's coming through is going to help to knock our temperatures down just a little closer to where they should be this time of year. So I mentioned that system on Tuesday. I'll time this out for you. We're going to start off on Monday. You see the low pressure off to our north and west. That's going to swing a cold front down out of the north and west. And like I said, most of Tuesday, I'm really thinking is going to be dry. But as this cold front approaches the area through the morning and afternoon hours of Monday or Tuesday, I should say a few showers and storms popping up right along that front. Notice how Futurecast really isn't indicating a whole lot of activity and we're basically in agreement with that. Just a few isolated showers and storms, maybe even some lasting into the overnight hours of Tuesday. So we're going to call it a 30% shot for some showers and maybe a rumble of thunder on Tuesday. After that, we dry out once again for Wednesday and Thursday. Our next best chance for rain comes in on Friday with another system. But then after that, we are shaping up to have another nice weekend as we get into next week. So you see Sunday, Monday, both looking nice. Temperatures staying fairly warm. Just chance for an off shower on Tuesday. Better rain chances come on Friday. But as I mentioned, cooler and drier as we get into next weekend. After the break, a recipe that's sure to drive you bananas. Quarantine with Courtney is coming up next. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, everyone. You may know Courtney Robb as one of our sports anchors here at WCBI, but lately she's been the queen of the quarantine. And this week on Quarantine with Courtney, she's got a fun and tasty way to pass the time. Take a look. Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to the quarantine. This time, we're going to be putting these babies to some good use. Obviously, you are going to need these, which are very ripe bananas. Next up, you're going to need a third cup coconut oil. If you do not have coconut oil, you can always use a third cup of olive oil. You can use a third cup of vegetable oil. You can also use a stick of butter if that's what you have on hand. You're also going to want to use a third cup of honey. You can also use a a third cup of maple syrup. You're going to need a fourth cup of milk or water. You're going to need a teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon vanilla extract, one and three fourths cup of all purpose flour. However, I totally know that flour is something that is super hard to come by right now. So use whatever flour you have on hand. If that's cake flour, cool, go ahead and use it. Even if you have pancake mix at home right now, go ahead and use that. Two eggs. This is the optional part, however, it is very fun and my personal favorite part of any baking concoction. I'm going to be adding in a fourth cup of walnuts and a fourth cup of chocolate chips because let's face it, chocolate is incredible. And a trusty bread pan. If you don't have a bread pan, use whatever pan you want. You do not need a bread pan. I'm using a bread pan. How many times can I say bread pan? First things first is you're going to want to preheat your oven to 325. A nice up close and personal look at the inside of the banana bread. This is my completely biased opinion because as we know, I made the bread. 
In the quarantine, we rate things on a scale of one to five naps. Five naps being the best thing you can spend your time on. And I am rating my own banana bread five naps because it is fantastic. Of course, if you go ahead and try my banana bread, make sure you tweet at me and let me know exactly what you think of the recipe, share photos with me, whatever. Also, if you have any recommendations for things that people should be trying with their families or by themselves during this time of quarantine, make sure you let me know. See you back here next time in the quarantine. All right, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, Trevor's going to have a final look at weather. Stay with us. Well, Trevor, I really, I just can't get over how pretty of a day it was out there and how pretty that shot was. Oh, for it was first look. Yeah, we were just looking back. And it was like downtown Columbus just looks gorgeous mm -hmm. in the golden sunshine. And it's going to look gorgeous for the next couple of days with all oh, the yeah. sunshine that we're going to see. Take a look at this AccuWeather seven day forecast. Sun for Sunday, a little bit of sun for Monday. I think we do see a few more clouds filtering in. We're going to have to watch for a chance for some showers and storms on Tuesday. But overall, cash the next seven days looking dry. All right, thanks, Trevor. And thank you guys for watching. We'll see you back here at 10.